Hey everybody, it is Philip from Freeman Adventures and I have a really big favor to ask of you. I would love it if you could send Eddie Leland, Captain Eddie Leland, who is battling cancer right now and needs your love, support, and prayers, send him a birthday card. His birthday is June the 22nd. There's his address. You can send it to him. You can send him your love, your good wishes. It would mean the world if we could fill his mailbox with all kinds of love. His daughter Heather came up with this idea. She wants to fill his mailbox with love and we can do that. If you share this please with friends and in your groups and get everyone to participate. Get the Freedman Adventure family to help Eddie out in this really difficult time. It would mean a lot. If you'd prefer to email it, you can email me at walkwithphil at gmail.com. A mountain of love from all of us. Thank you so much. Please share this. Let's get everybody together and make this happen. The CJ sinks up in the Channel Islands. A 71.6 pound white sea bass, the biggest white sea bass Captain Tucker McCombs of the Endeavor has ever seen. We've got the bluefin tuna results from last night and what went on yesterday during the day. And of course, we're talking San Clemente Island, the Channel Islands, everything in between. You know what time it is, everybody. It is time for the morning briefing. Good morning, my friends. Mmm. So good. I probably should hang on to that for my throat, but I am feeling a lot better. Thanks for all your good wishes out there. Deeply appreciate that. The lead in about Captain Eddie Leland, his birthday is June 22nd. So if you could help us make a difference in his life, that would be great. Just a little bit of your time. I know it's a lot to ask. I know how busy you are. A little bit of your time. Get a birthday card, a get well card, send it off to Eddie. That'll make a huge difference to him, his family, and all of his loved ones. So let's do it together. It'll be really great. All right, let's start out with the CJ up there in Channel Islands who sank yesterday at Prisoner's Harbor at Santa Cruz Island. Apparently hit the island, but I don't have the details, so I'm not going to speculate at all. What I do want to point out is that the crew on the CJ and a couple of sport boats, the Sea Biscuit was there, I believe the Ranger 85 was involved, the Coast Guard involved, all did a great job in making sure everybody got out of there safe and sound. And of course, that is what I want to take away from this for right now. The fact that everybody is okay, that is the most important thing. Thank God for that. The CJ, we've been working with them this year. Just the day before, they had a great day's fishing. It was 17 halibut on the boat. A little bit more. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What a great day on the CJ today as eight anglers had 17 halibut. Tremendous fishing. Most of it on the dropper loop. One of those fish was taken on a tube lure, but just excellent fishing. Don't pull his head out. But man, I'll tell you, it just really was a very iffy situation in terms of anytime something like this happens, you've got to have real professionals on scene. And apparently we did have that, so that is the best thing that I can tell you. All right, my friends, let's get into it right away here. Let's go down to Ensenada, where Pongueros are having some really good fishing down there. Most of the time, they're catching their bluefin tuna on the trolled Mad Max. A lot of that 20 to 40 pound fish down in that neck of the woods, but they're 60 to 100 pounds and sometimes even bigger than that. So there has been some really good fishing for those guys. It still can be a little bit on the inconsistent side. We'll continue to watch it for you very, very closely, but a lot of guys are getting some really good hit. Battle of the Pongas is going on south of the border this weekend, and we'll be watching that for you very, very closely. That should be a lot of fun as the guys are going to have a little friendly competition to see who can catch the biggest bluefin tuna down there in Ensenada this weekend. We'll continue to monitor that for you very, very closely. And a lot of times when the rockfish don't bite, I mean, when the bluefin don't bite, you can fall back on the rockfish. And you can also fall back on the barracuda, maybe. The game fisher yesterday said limits in minutes. Really great gar fishing down there. And, you know, that sometimes portends a good bite here in SoCal. It starts down there and gets rolling here. Barracuda bite excellent down there. I know that Louis Prieto... On his boat, uh, he had some barracuda, calico bass, 
So it's kind of more of a like a springtime bite now. And as I mentioned, you were about a month behind in terms of conditions. So we remain that way right now. But I like what I'm seeing south of the border. You got bluefin. You got that gar starting to show up. We might have some iron biters here very, very soon. It is a little breezier this morning. I should let you know that next week looks like it's going to be a very breezy week. Offshore bluefin, Channel Islands, just about everywhere. That's a ways out there. But we need to watch that. We will be doing that for you here on the morning briefing. All right, the San Diego based boys, the Pegasus headed in with limits of bluefin tuna. Gotta love that rig out of Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Those guys constantly do it. Hard work, good work, and come through with limits. Now, the overall picture in San Diego for that bluefin tuna bite right now is inconsistencies. I mean, you get a big score like the Polaris Supreme with 96 bluefin tuna on their two day trip. Absolute limits, most of it 20 to 40, or well, let's put it this way. On the Pegasus, half their fish was 20 to 40. The other half was 60 to 100 pounds. You get that mix in terms of the size of fish. But you have a score like that on the Polaris Supreme, or you have a big score like they did on the Pegasus. And the Royal Star, they've been having a very tough trip right now. Not picking on the Royal Star. It's just the way this thing has been going. The Royals had some great trips this year. But, man, some guys are getting them. And some guys are not. And that has been the situation down there and continues to be just that way. You've got to bring the kitchen sink with you. I was talking to Jacob Barclay on the Pegasus. He said, Phil, all kinds of different stuff working. You know, the sinker rigs are working, the bombs, uh, the knife jigs and the rip rollers and the Daiwa SK jigs, 300 to 500 grams just depends on wind and current and how deep the fish are. Having metered line is so important, said Jacob. Knowing the exact depth your lure is at. The captain on the PA is going to say, drop to 400 feet, drop to 450, drop to 300, drop to 280. You've got to know where your lure is. It's so important. So that metered line, Iser Line makes it, a couple of other companies make it. Whatever it is that floats your boat, get it and use it. It's so very important. The daytime fishing down there is pretty good at times. You know, you'll get a stop for two or three fish, a little plunker kind of bite. Sometimes fish are taken on the slide where you're rolling up and they see fish and you make a cast while the boat is still sliding ahead. So we're starting to see more and more of that kind of fishing down there in that neck of the woods. On board the San Diego, Richard Cayo was on there. He had a 50-pound fish, raved about the crew on the San Diego. They ended up with 23 bluefin tuna. They leave in the morning, come back at night. My good friend, Captain Sean Hardigan on the Mission Bell. He was out yesterday at a point Loma sword fishing, and they found some bluefin. They had 13 guys, 15 bluefin tuna for some pretty darn good action for these local boys right now. And that is good news because they've been catching a lot of bonita and seen a lot of tuna, but it hasn't been biting all that well. Well, right now, it finally settled, starting to bite a little bit better. On the Liberty, they had 23 guys catch 25 blue fin tuna and a yellow fin tuna mixed up, wearing its jackets in. Man, this weather is freaking cold up here in Estados Unidos. Actually, they were south of the border down there around Rosarito. So he was, uh, you know, yellowfin prefer a little bit warmer water. Uh, how that one squirted in there, I'm not sure. We've had about six yellowfin this year so far. So maybe that portends the El Nino, which is going to affect us here in the very near future. Still not giving up on albacore. In fact, convinced as ever that it is going to happen this year. I think we're going to catch albacore. I'd love to see one caught today because uh, I got a bet with Scott Buchard. I said at least one albacore would be t- taken by a sport boat, L.A., Orange County based, or San Diego, even Ensenada, by today. So I'm going to owe Scott some money if one doesn't get caught. But overall picture, it's still early. Hopefully that's going to come together. We continue to point out to you that while chronologically this might be bucking up against summer right now, we are like a month behind. It Water is very cool. And we are seeing that kind of fishing right now. So we'll continue to watch it for you very, very closely, see what happens. All right, let's get into what's going on at our islands out at San Clemente Island. Sea lions are a big pain in the neck. We've had some really good scores on yellowtail out there at times. But overall, it's been a little bit slower here recently. Thunderbird had three yellowtail yesterday. The rest of the boys over there picking a few yellows. Got an occasional halibut and a sea bass. 
not anything to write home about, but you can fall back on some really excellent rock fishing out there at San Clemente Island. Hopefully that's going to continue to head in the right direction at Catalina Island. You know, every once in a while, sea bass halibut, a uh, few yellowtail. I know the Patriot had three yellowtail, hooked 11, though, yesterday. The uh, Sword King with a yellowtail yesterday. So Catalina, kind of a mix of fish. There's a sprinkling of barracuda, some caught at Catalina, a few local fish, some up in the Channel Islands. Portends well, hopefully, for more gar to be caught as the season goes along. Incidentally, the El Patron is ready to rock and roll out of 22nd Street Landing in San Pedro, California. She is so beautiful. I went on board there with Michael Limon, the young man that has turned his academic career around because of fishing. Grandpa said, you don't get better grades, you're not going fishing anymore. So he turned that around, and that made a big difference in their lives. But So uh, we went down, took a look at the El Patron, and she is one beautiful vessel. I mean, very comfortable looking. The galley looks great. Everything really looked beautiful. And they are available for charter at a 22nd Street Landing. And she's fast, man. She'll do 15 knots. So you can zoom around, maybe fish two islands, even on a day trip. Nothing wrong with that. We'll continue to watch that for you very, 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 very closely. All right. Um, and then as we get up in the Channel Islands, of course, the big story is that white sea bass that was taken on board the Endeavor. They've had some great fishing in their most recent trip. 19 halibut, three white sea bass, a 71.6 pound white sea bass. Tremendous catch. And in fact, it led the crew. I was talking to Daniel and I was talking to Tucker. So it's the biggest sea bass we've ever seen. What a magnificent catch. What a magnificent fish. And what a great job they do at Ventura Harbor sword fishing day in and day out, whether it's on the Endeavor or the Half Day Boat Californian, which is the old Matt Walsh. We had people asking on our live show with Danny Cadota, and that was a great show. You should go back and watch that one. Danny was fantastic. But they were asking, where is the Matt Walsh? It's the Californian up there. And also... My friend Cody Rogers does such a great job on the Island Spirit. 805-676-3474. Uh, kids 12 and under fish free with a paid adult on Sundays on board the Californian. So great way to spend Father's Day for sure. The Mirage yesterday, 33 halibut. What a trip. Gino Machino was on that trip. And he just had a fabulous time. Said the flatties were really biting. They also had three white sea bass, kind of caught incidentally. So really great fishing. Gino, thanks for those great photos. My friend, I'm so happy you were on such a magnificent trip. Coral Sea had limits of rockfish. So they've had some really good rock fishing up there in Santa Barbara. And they get the occasional hit on the halibut sea bass, all of that kind of stuff. So we'll continue to watch that for you very, very closely. Our local area is here. We're catching a lot of sculpin and rockfish on the local scene out on the Monte Carlo yesterday. I mentioned that Michael Limon and his grandpa, Dan uh, Lightfoot. Am I getting that right? I was calling him Lighthouse yesterday on the show. Is it Lightfoot? What is it? I forget. I think it's Lightfoot. Sorry, Dan. Anyway, those two guys were on the Monte Carlo, and they said they had just an absolute ball. Had really... A great time catching, sculpting another great eating fish. So nothing wrong with that. And we see a lot of that going on locally uh, from down below the border all the way up to the Channel Islands. All these guys are mostly picking away at sculpting a rockfish. And if you're saying, wait a minute, why well, aren't they catching calico bass and barracuda? Because we are a month behind schedule. We are a month behind. This cold water is having its effect. Now, we're going to get into this really interesting scenario here where this water is going to get warm at some point. Fishing is going to become more consistent. Bluefin, sea bass, halibut, yellowtail, all of that stuff's really going to bite well. I'm thinking albacore, but as we move deeper into summer, we're going to be affected by an El Nino, and that means warm water and God, who knows, maybe those Dorado come back, maybe we have yellowfin tuna, maybe somebody catches a wahoo. I mean, it's anybody's guess what this season is going to bring. And while some of you are thinking to yourselves, it's been a tough one, inconsistent, as illustrated by the Polaris Supreme with great fishing, the Royal Star, with slow fishing, it's going to get more consistent. It's just going to take a little bit of time. All right, hey, don't forget about Eddie Leland. Send him your wishes. If you need to send an email, you can send it to me. But 
it would really make a big difference in his life. And so many of you have already done it. So thank you all for doing just that. Have a great one, everybody. As always, it's my pleasure to spend time with you. It's a beautiful Friday morning. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend with family and friends. I know Father's Day is Sunday. Have fun, enjoy, and take care. I hope to see you really, really soon.